All right, guys, welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So I have a question that I'm going to try to answer in this video, which is, uh, is standalone or is transforming units better? We're going to specifically be looking at the worldwide download celebration units, both, uh, of like 2018 and beyond, and then kind of compare them over the years and see like how they have aged over time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with Goku. Um, pretty bad. I, I think these units, both the Goku and Frieza, were just some of the worst designed Dokkan Fest. Probably of all time. Uh, I th They were really cool, of course. But losing defense with each transformation and the um, them stacking to quote-unquote make up for that was really, really bad. Even with Goku just getting... 1% extra damage reduction each turn that he transforms and then also needing to basically have one, two, three, four, five appearances before he's at max attack power. When at the time, uh, no event in the game would even last that long. So the only place that you would be able to see these guys at full power, um, was probably their own Dokkan events because they made it where you had to go through each form as their Dokkan event. Um, I would even say Frieza did did not age that well either. Sure, he had some of these more powerful links, but I think the damage reduction uh, was better than the HP at the time. It could definitely be argued that Frieza was better than Goku. Goku was better than Frieza, uh, especially since a lot of the Goku links also transform throughout the battle. So you get Super Saiyan and all of the Super Saiyan links, and then you go to two, and then it stays the same. Three, half the link set changes. God, half the link set changes. Blue. It's just like, what were they thinking? Frieza definitely did not have that issue as much, I would say. Uh, you know, just swapping out two links. But even still. And then one of the things that I, I always thought was very weird to me is this Frieza was on movie bosses, but the specific super attack animations were from uh, right before the Universal Survival Saga tournament, where Goku and Frieza obviously were going to try to punch each other and then see who would punch each other first. Uh, and then Goku does not have movie heroes. <laughs> uh, or any, any saga category for whatever reason. And it, is, it was just like, even when you got them to full power, they just didn't feel that that good. After their EZA, I think it did help some of the issues, of course. Uh, Goku getting um, more defense when supering extreme class enemies, and then no longer losing defense per transformation, actually gaining defense. But in Frieza as well, again, no, not losing uh, the defense after transforming. But even still, I think Frieza didn't get enough because he, he still only kept the HP and <laughs> Goku it was not even able to survive a lot of these harder hitting bosses. Even if you were able to get that high with, um, with the damage reduction because this is not enough turns to transform. And that's if you even had the ability to transform. There's a lot of situations where you were just like, oh, well... I can't really do anything because I can't. I, I I'm gonna kill the enemy regardless, but I don't want to put Goku in slot one because he's not gonna tank that well. So I just kind of have to throw him and, and just pray for the best. But it is what it is. But yeah, these these guys aged really horribly, I would say. Uh, but then we go into next year, <laughs> and uh, the, the, I I would say they did pretty good. Go Gohan had a pretty good category. If uh, he had one of the worst, no, the worst uh, active skill transformation in the game. Um, and Cell, Cell had an okay one, 30% or less. Well, I guess it, it is pretty awful, but it, because you would get the full heal afterwards, it would help a lot. But th that's the thing is that it, it really sucks to see situations like this and probably why um i i before we I, I started recording this video i'd probably say that i do think uh that standalone units are better 
just because they gatekeep Super Saiyan 2 Gohan so, so much. There is not a single team on Kamehameha that you would want to bring an Androids or wants to bring an Android 16 unit at the time. Even transfer or even after an easy a all these years later i would still argue that you don't want to bring any androids the only one you can argue is probably gamma one on a um what was a what was a team that you could run them on i think it was like i think it was like gohan's team right ultimate gohan i think he had a, a leader skill that was yeah superheroes and hybrid saints but you i don't know if you want to bring be running ultimate gohan as a leader but yeah it's just it's just such a uh a travesty what happened to him cell was was all right because you could still get his transformation turn one even if it was hp uh gate kept but at least you could transform on any team he's on um and even before eza getting the full hp really just helped out so much of his teams and I, I remember one of the top strategies of the time for doing sbr was to just bring an int perfect cell oh i i took 300k damage and i'm on uh i'm on the brink of death uh perfect cell comes out boom he now has a full heal that he just gives you for free and that and that was really really cool at the time ajo gohan was I would say is a little bit disappointing of a release because like I said once you were able to transform I, you could probably argue that he's one of the better LRs of his time but the fact was that Kalen Khalifa came out a couple months later or er, before and does everything that this Gohan does but better because dodge chance and multiple supers so it's just like the only thing this Gohan had what was better was the leader skill and active skill if you could even pop it off but it was just it was just such a a dumb decision at the time i would say uh but yeah and then if we go into the next year we could see str vegito and um the go tanks or majin boot go tanks i think i think this is a year that they did transformation units right because they didn't make it where it was the hardest thing ever sure it was it was a little bit like, you wouldn't be able to see it every single time, but they made it where the base passive was still good enough where you could uh, see that this guy aged pretty well. Even uh, Boo Tanks over here aged pretty well just because of him having the defense stacking and the healing every single turn. Uh, and again, having the really, really easy active skill to, to use. To the point where you could probably argue that he's somewhat usable today. And when he gets an easy A, uh, just from the stat boost alone, he he will be dominating just about anything. You, as long as you give him time, of course, and you're not releasing a whole bunch of short red zone <laughs> type content. <coughs> Future Saga. But the STR Vegito, I, I feel, it really felt like the content at the time uh, was... Like, this guy was definitely meant for SBR, and then this guy was definitely meant for something like the LGE uh, events, or the longer type events with infinite Dragon Ball history. And it was really cool to see that they kind of split their uh, attentions for the events at the time. So Vegito was really good in that one, in the SBR, and then Bootanks was really good uh, in the longer type content. So they both had their own uses and stuff to do at the time. Um, and like I was saying that they, the, their active skills were some of the better ones uh, to get, especially because Vegito gets the heal. And then even though Ultimate Gohan gets a smaller heal, it still procs at the same turn. So you could technically get 22% uh, in that turn that he is on. And then him having the really cool animations, as well as Super Vegito having the really cool animations. I feel like a lot of people were okay with Vegito being a non-standalone, if it was just a little bit disappointing. Because, uh, it, again, it wasn't that hard to get out. The type of content that he was for, which is SBR, you could definitely go four turns in SBR 
uh, especially if you're doing more so stalling strategies with attack lowering, stunning, sealing, etc, etc. Uh, so this is definitely one of the years that I think that transforming units were done right. And then we go into the uh, standalone characters with the Super Saiyan Goku and the full power Frieza. Now, I, obviously we can't know what would have happened if these guys were transforming, but it, it is something to think about that a lot of these standalone characters that come out even for Worldwide Down Celebration, they all have something to build up so that way they're not being uh, that far behind on the transforming characters. What they did for the Goku and Vegeta, or Goku and Vegeta, Goku and Frieza, of course, was that Goku would stack attack on his 18 key and then get defense stack on his 12 key. And then Frieza just did the exact opposite. Um, so Frieza was obviously popping out these really huge attack stats and Goku was getting a good amount of defense and uh after doing a couple of supers um and the only thing that i would probably say is is a very big miss at the time for these standalone units is their active skills were absolutely horrible goku's was not able to be seen in anything other than probably sbr but it, it, it's just like a lot of the sbr stages were super class units uh so it was like you would mostly only see freezes but getting an enemy whose hp is 30 percent or below and then having it be uh class restricted as well was just a a, a really big fumble at the time i would say especially because they probably had the best animations in the game for sure uh goku doing his the hand-to-hand -hand combat was so good it was so good and even the kamehameha at the end uh blasting the enemy up into space and then having both of these have ko screens which uh i thought was pretty cool because a lot of these units even now they don't have ko screens on maybe their 12 key or maybe their 18 key uh and these guys had it on both and their active skill so they had three ko screens um but it's just like it is showing that they also do know how to do um standalone characters pretty well too with uh like i was saying the full power freeze and the, and the goku but i think that did come at the cost of um them doing the active skills horribly even if it did it was basically like a like uh, a move killer at the time or a finisher um and then we go into the next with cooler and goku another standalone worldwide down celebration and again, we could see it over where Cooler is stacking attack and Goku is stacking defense, where they try to make it where the standalone characters are not lagging behind the transforming. And the way that they do that is by making it where the um, the standalone characters will stack in some way to keep up with them. Um, I, I would say these units have aged pretty well. Cooler, not as much, but that's just because of the extreme curse of uh, never getting help when they need it uh and then by the time that they get help it's already too late <laughs> we're already getting into the part where it's probably too late if they do give us like another freezy unit or cooler unit <laughs> if i'm being honest but obviously bird coup having the revive uh oh wait, no that's the active skill the where is it i guess it's just here the revive with 59% HP, it has aged out pretty well, especially with units like World Tournament Goku coming out and units like um, the units like GT Duo did make this a little bit worse, but I still personally use Goku uh, a lot of the time because while I would say that the GT Duo have the better standby in terms of um, what it does, because you get the massive attack boost, of course. And then you get the um, the big attack, obviously, and the key support. All of that stuff is really helpful. I would say that Bird Coup, uh, a lot of the time, it, it, it's he's not like a terrible option to run, even still. Him having the massive amounts of key both here and then building up. Him having the, like I was talking about, the revive. Which 9% isn't too much compared to um, the 
GT Duo, but yeah, I would still say that like I still frequently use this guy over GT Duo when it comes to um, when I do like red zone videos, just because uh, I, I probably like running Bird Q just a little bit more uh, when he has his revive rather than the, the GT Duo, and then running like the World's Tournament Goku, so that way. Um, I, I I feel like having the bird queue as like a floating option and then his whole purpose being for the revive has helped him age out a little bit better. And then Cooler doing the massive attack stats, like he still is probably one of the hardest hitting LRs in the game if he can uh, get his super attacks off feature, which has a medium chance. Um, But even still him having the guaranteed additional super attack here as well, him having the extra... Uh, chance here i remember when the thing at the time was watching cooler do like five or six super attacks in a row and you would just be like what, uh, what this guy who's living this uh or you can have the coin flip of none of them activate and you die <laughs> but yeah I, I i think that a lot of the the stuff that came out has made it where um, he aged out a little bit worse than Goku, but just because, unfortunately, he has, like, no defensive utility. Uh, just having no damage reduction, no guard, no dodge chance. Just getting the defense from here has made him age out a little bit faster than Goku. Even though Goku, uh, doesn't stack relatively fast because it's only on his 18 key. And he has to get hit once every single turn to get, uh, his pretty big defense boost but that doesn't mean that he, his his leader skill was probably the best for extreme class at the time you can probably argue it for even now that he's one of the better ones uh the only thing that probably surpassing him maybe being intima junior and tech merge the masu but i would say that they did these standalones pretty good as well and then we have this here <laughs> I would say that this year was a little bit of a fumble with the um, the Goku and Vegeta. I think this is where you could make the argument that having a standalone version of these characters is very, very much needed. Uh, not only because of the linking, of course, in the category. The, well, the categories would be worse if they weren't uh, transformed, but them having uh better linking if they are just like a standalone vegeta blue because we haven't really had one but also for situations like this where unfortunately him transforming only on turn five and then then releasing future saga um red zones that just don't have that much time you basically see this guy for one turn and that's it uh, you, you'd only be able to see Vegeta Blue for one turn, and then you'd probably kill the enemy. Uh, unless you're going into, like, infinite Dragon Ball history. But, this is, uh, a, a situation where it's just, like, you can't even see the max power of this unit either. Um, it's just because, it's like I said, you want to activate on turn 5. Because, and, but you have to have a Future Saga ally, or have a Future Saga, uh, enemy, of course. Wait, no, it's... Or when there's a Future Saga category ally and to see him attacking turn. Yeah. Or a Future Saga category enemy starting from the 7th turn. So it's only guaranteed if you float them off twice, basically. Uh, and again, what? why would you... What, what SBR is going to... Or SBR. What red zone is going to turn 7? But that, it's just like, that's just the unfortunate side of what happens when the, there's these transforming units. I would say it's a lot less of an issue with Tech Merge the Masu. Uh, just because it's like, yes, he gets like so much better once he goes into infinite Zamasu, but that doesn't mean that, uh, this fusion Zamasu is, is bad, uh, for sure. Especially considering that his best case scenario, like Goku and Vegeta's best case scenario is out right, out right now because he is type effective and gets extra attack and defense when he's up against the realm of, Co uh, realm of gods category enemy tech merge Zamasu is better when there are no realm of gods categories uh enemies so he he's missing out on three key and a, and 50 percent attack and defense if you're going up against merge zamasu uh goku black if you're going up against regular zamasu so the top 
two stages in the game, this guy is just like weaker. Uh, and if you if you're taking him into Omega, I haven't seen. I, I personally can't comment on that because I haven't uh, watched too many videos on it. But I would assume that this guy does okay, especially because then at that point you could just transform uh, into Infinite Zamasu and then you'll probably be fine. But uh, he he's like a, a special case because he gets worse as time goes on because he doesn't he doesn't have any like defensive capabilities that build up at all instead getting more attack as he receives attacks uh he just gets the damage reduction that slowly goes down and then gets the defense on hit and then the more defense if he's below the um 70 hp when he gets the attack so it's just like I think that this this guy was uh, uh, the opposite side of basically the Super Saiyan Blues, where even with the content out and he's missing out on 50% attack and defense in the three key, he's still doing relatively well and he's only going to age out better because he'll have the damage reduction uh, of 80% for the first couple of turns and the 60% after his second appearance, you know, 40% after. So. And then after that is all gone, then you can go into Infinite Zamasu, hopefully. So it's just like, it, it really makes you wonder, like, why do they make it where sometimes the pre-transformation is just so bad? And then they make it where the transformation is so good, but then, uh-oh, the, <laughs> the active skill to get to that point is really, really bad. So it, it, it's just like, do you prefer having those extra categories if it means that uh you might not be seeing the the really hype uh character come out a lot of the time because again like i said having the active skill uh just makes it where this guy just is so so much worse i would say uh but then, and then if we look at let's go ahead and look at something like the categories of uh, something like agl gohan look at all these categories that's that's the that's the i would probably say the trade-off the trade-off of having these units where um they go into the hyper thing later on is that they'll have so much more categories because of it i remember when when ajo gohan came out it was it was just so, such like a of a meme just talking about oh i wonder if this new category that's going to come out is on gohan's or or uh if that new category is gonna have gohan on it and then it's like oh heavenly events oh mastered evolution oh entrusted will oh battle of fate <laughs> gohan just got everything <laughs> and now with the new category we got tournament participants it's a, another another gem for uh ago gohan but and then uh, obviously we could see uh the same thing happening with, with the goku and vegeta units they'll have realm of gods patara pure saiyans uh specifically pure saiyans like i was talking about uh it's just something you'll only see with the unfused characters obviously for whatever reason they don't like putting the fusion characters on pure saiyans even though i don't even think it would mean that much of a buff to be honest uh, i don't really see a reason why they wouldn't but i'll i'll go ahead and say that i probably like the standalones more uh just because i think that the way that they or they do the standalones a throughout the years have been here let me bring them up the way that they've done the standalones throughout the years is that they'll make it where they'll have some mechanic in order to age out better and a lot of the times they'll fumble the pre-transformation um so the character could just you not only do you have to rely on one character being good but you also have to rely on the other character being good so you had not only have to have worry about Goku and Vegeta, but you also have to worry about Super Vegito having a good kit. Uh, and it's a little bit hard when he loses 30% damage reduction. <laughs> so he, he obviously the Super Vegito was was better uh, defensively as base form, you could argue, uh, not counting the scounter, of course. But I personally, like I was saying, like the Sandalones more because I, I feel like they, when a standalone card is done. I feel like they put more time and effort, or they have more more time and efforts to uh, really make the the kits of these units pretty good. And not only that, but the animations. When you have the the transforming cards, 
you have to have multiple super attacks you have to have their entrance animation you have to have their transformation then you have to have their super attacks again then you have to have an active skill if they do that uh with something like the tech gods uh, that's exactly what happened they've had they have like six animations over there uh <laughs> so i think that when something like that happens that they can't really uh polish it as much as something where it's just uh, the standalone characters that we've seen in the past have been able to do. Uh, even if we're talking about like this worldwide downward celebration, can we pull them up real quick? This worldwide downward celebration, uh, if we count the part two LRs, we... there we go. If we count the part two LRs, we could see that they put a lot of care and effort into doing future Gohan's animations right. And we saw that they put a lot of care and effort into doing his kit as well and it's just like you can look at some of these transforming characters over the years and we could see that active skill was fumbled but their animations were done pretty well uh where is blue Vegito? i guess I, I already caught him i already put him off but either way uh and uh, the passive skill was done pretty good but the active skill was done horribly. We could, we like, uh, over the years, I feel like they've, they've had it where the standalone characters have had better, like I was saying, animations and have had better, uh, aging than the transforming characters. Cause like, like I was saying, you have to have so many things go right for them to be good. You have to have the regular base form be usable and then the fusion or the active skill transformation be even better than something that's going to be stacking and doing uh stuff like that along the time or along the turns so even though i, I really love the the ago vegeto blue and i really love the texamasu i probably would have preferred them uh just as a standalone like fusion zamasu or even infinite uh fusion zamasu if you want to argue that i guess but easily easily i would have it just be you know vegeto blue uh rather than again having it where it's held back by the restriction and uh oh now you unfortunately can't see him ever so oh, let me know what you guys think uh, i feel like i've been rambling on for so long we're already 27 minutes in but yeah uh, my my stance is, is that i like standalones more i i will probably use um characters that are untransformed more probably though or transform to get better just because of like i was saying the categories but my overall enjoyment of a unit is better when they are standalone and take that time and effort and care to really make a unit good and make a unit look good rather than um uh, having it where it's transforming and then they have to do so much and you could definitely tell that like for example the super saiyan blues animations are nothing compared to the vegeto blue animations for sure uh, but like I said, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you like videos like this, make sure to leave a like. If you don't, obviously dislike. Uh, subscribe if you like to see content like this. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. See you guys in the next one. Peace.